This is a classic question. Mass on a slope. A mass on a slope could be many things. It could be just a box. It could be a ball. It could be a car. It could be a skier. Take your pick. I'm just going to go for a box. And it has a mass of M. Now, what's the first thing we know? We know that gravity is pulling it straight downwards. And what's that force equal to? Yep, it's mg. Mass times g, gravitational field strength, or acceleration due to gravity, same thing. But the thing is that the mass is never going to move downwards, is it? Because, well, the slope is there, stopping it. The only thing that can happen is that it moves up or down the slope. So actually, we're concerned with this component of the weight that is pulling down the slope, or parallel to the slope. Now, there is another component as well, and that's here. And of course, these two components are at right angles to each other. So we now have a component of the weight that is pulling down the slope and the component of the weight that is pulling into the slope. So we need to figure out what these are relative to the weight. Here's our angle theta. And it turns out that this angle here is also going to be theta. Now people get a little bit confused with this. Where does this come from? Well, it just comes from triangles. So if I carry on this line just going down here, we know that that's 90 degrees there. So therefore, this angle here well, we know that the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So therefore, we've already got 90. So therefore, this angle that's left is going to be equal to 90 minus theta. Tell you what, I'm just going to call that phi. So if that's phi up there, then that must mean that this is also phi down here too. So that means theta must be our angle between the vertical and the component of the weight that's going into the slope, perpendicular into the slope. Okay, so now that we've proven that, well, if you haven't seen my easy vectors trick video, go and watch that. It's much easier to deal with resolving vectors if you know this trick, as opposed to drawing triangles. But here, we're turning through the angle to get to this component going into the slope. So therefore, we're going to be using cos, not sine. And we know we want a smaller number because, well, it's a component, so it's not going to be more than the weight, is it? That's impossible. So therefore, this force, this component of the weight is equal to mg cos theta. We're not too concerned about that one because, well, like we said, it's not really moving into the slope, is it? But we do do a lot with the one that's pulling down the slope. Of course, we're turning away from the angle this time, so it's not going to be mg cos theta, but rather mg sine theta. So that's the first thing we do. When it comes to a mass on a slope question, we draw an arrow going downwards that says mg sine theta. That is always going to be true regardless of whether it's moving up or down, stationary, constant speed, accelerating, mg sine theta pulling downwards is always true. So now we have to consider what is actually happening to the mass. What if it's stationary? If it's stationary, that means that, well, Newton's first law, the forces are balanced. So there must be a force pulling back upwards that is just as big as mg sine theta. What's this resulting from? Well, usually it's friction, isn't it? So I'm just going to call that FR. So there we go friction or frictional forces, but I'm just going to say friction, is equal to mg sine theta. And of course, that isn't just the case if it's stationary, if it's at a constant speed as well. Now, it's not always friction that is pulling upwards, of course. There could be a cable. Sometimes you see this with like a, a pulley there, something like that. There could be a cable pulling up like that. And then there's like a, a weight here pulling down. So that actually could be tension instead. So it also could be tension is equal to mg sine theta. But what if it's accelerating upwards then? Let's stick with our tension, shall we? Well, when it comes to any F equals MA question, if it's accelerating upwards, then we know the tension must be greater than mg sine theta. If the tension was just equal to mg sine theta, then it would just be holding it there or pulling it up at a constant speed. But if it's accelerating it upwards as well, then we're adding on a little bit more force. The opposite would be true if it was accelerating downwards downwards acceleration, the tension would not need to be as big. Well, in any of these questions, it's basically the resultant force is equal to, so F net, we could say, is equal to MA. What is the resultant force in this case? Well, if mg sine theta is greater, then it's going to be mg sine theta take away T is equal to MA. Or in other words, in this case, tension is going to be equal to mg sine theta take away MA. And of course, if it's a pulley, then that means that the tension is equal to the mg of this pulling down. But I'm going to call that big mg because you would need to distinguish between the two masses here. Sometimes we do talk about the reaction force of the slope perpendicular to the surface. We can call that R. 
That, of course, is equal to mg cos theta. If you want to see this applied in questions, then have a look at my past paper videos and my PMT question walkthrough videos. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please leave a like. Let me know what you'd like to see next down in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.